Welcome everyone to the Coast Spot. Today we're going to do another park update here at Six Flags Great Adventure. We're starting right at the base of King Naka, the world's tallest roller coaster, outside the park at the new Safari Off-Road Adventure boarding station. If you don't know, the park is now not having anyone drive through. It's going to be back to just having vehicles again and uh, it's included for your season pass. And there's a little bit of a gift shop, some eats, and everything in here. So we should look at all this in a full tour, but uh, and give you more information about the experience and how it might differ from previous years. The nice thing about boarding from out here is that you do get to go through uh, the area of the wild safari that has the baboons, which you do not get in the amusement park. So here's a quick look at what the base camp looks like. You have a reptile exhibit over there. This is a huge queue for the trucks where you board over there. The new platform was built. Another exhibit there. You have the outfitters, gift shop, restrooms, and a small place to get some bites. And uh, we'll take a look at what the uh, construction progress is on the Savannah Sunset Resort. I think I got that name correctly. All right, so that's everything from over here. We actually didn't do it because the line looked to be at least two hours, maybe longer. And they're not running that many trucks, unfortunately, right now. Uh, so be aware of that. Uh, but remember, this does open before the amusement park, at least this week, and probably a lot of other times. I'm, I'm thinking that they might be opening this an hour early. Uh, just like they did with the safari on a normal day. So uh, that might be your key to, you know, gaining some extra time, not having to wait inside the park or here. So just be aware of that. And here's a, another look at the new platform. It looks very similar in style to uh, what it looks like inside the park, just without a canopy. You exit directly into the parking lot, just like you used to back in the day. Before, with the safari drive through adventure, you go right into the parking booth. We have to exit again to get to preferred parking. All right, let's go inside the park. Lots of operational changes. Superman is testing? Ooh, maybe they uh, went back on their Memorial Day thing. Interesting. All right, inside the park, our soldiers are gone. They have a lion. Not sure if this is historical or, or not, if it's something that they've had before, and they just decided to put it here. The base is very weird, because it looks like a bench. Like I should be sitting on that bench right now, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. He's very basic looking, so I feel like he's old, because this wouldn't fly today as far as the complexity of it. And I don't think it fits at all. I think if this is historic, this is not the place to have it. All right, I took way too much of a deep dive into this, but he dates about till 1979. So just five years after the park opened, it was located in the Garden Marvels Chip Shot Miniature Golf, which is located pretty much where Daredevil Dive is today. That operated until 1986. And then in 1991, another miniature golf course was built called Adventure Golf, right next to the Yum Yum Cafe, where that nice grassy area is today. And that operated until 1994. After that, it was located into the Safari Exploration Station, you know, the exit of the Safari, where we just showed you what it is now, just been transformed into the outpost and he was located in the middle of the parking lot for a while and then they purchased more figures themed to the safari or left over from different attractions and had them all over the exploration center and obviously uh, most of these guys were either uh, trashed or put in backstage when the safari closed in 2012. So why did they decide to put him here? I think it's paying homage to the original Great Adventure sign that was on 537. That was this giant lion. He looked awesome, waving a flag that said Great Adventure. He was relocated when they created the rainbow entrance sign in the 80s. And then he was put around the safari area in the base camp and then on the entrance road right before they told loose. He was eventually, unfortunately, damaged when they tried to move him a third time. And I think... That's what they're trying to pay homage to a little bit here. It would be really cool, though, what they would do is, since there's plenty of photos of it, make a recreation of it, scale it down uh, to fit this planner or somewhere else 
in the park, at the entrance, whatever, uh, of that original sign after trying to pay homage to it. I think that would be really cool. It's a shame that sign, uh, unfortunately, met its demise, but it'd be really cool if they did that. But what they've done here, I don't think that's great. If anything, bring the soldiers back. Walking down the boardwalk this direction for the first time this year, it took four visits. It is Saturday. I heard that food operations were absolutely terrible yesterday while we were at Hershey Park, but uh, the Garden State Grill's closed. The two steak places closed, but they do have some of this food offering over here open and they have changed things around a little bit so we'll take a look inside of it inside the boardwalk food court have a little bit of different menu for kicking wings they've changed inside here uh, a lot less seating actually or the same at the same time they got rid of the chop six there they have that nice silhouette there of the entire park that's cool and then they have a bar here where you can get snacks as you saw going into the parking lot that superman was testing it's open. The walls have been pushed back. This whole area was non-accessible the last two weeks. Uh, as you can see, the walls are still up blocking off Green Lantern, but this must have been a last minute change because they were dedicated to not open this to Memorial Day. Obviously, this is just happening today, so we don't know if this is gonna be all the time, during the week, temporarily for spring break. Regardless, it's ready. And the parachutes are still sitting sad. Get rid of them. We don't need ugly eyesores that are closed. Or put the money in and refurbish it and open it as something different or better. That would be so cool, right? Yeah. Put some stand-up cages on it like Knott's had. No, that's just crazy. That's never happening. And uh, the Superman logo. It needs some help. It needs to be replaced. They are working on the Green Lantern one right now, though, so... Uh, hopefully they'll take their attention to this one as well. I said this last year, but it's so weird how that one section of track, which I always got painted, but I feel like it got painted with some low quality paints, already faded so much more than the rest of it. And of course it's at the tallest point of the ride. I think they just might have just open because there is no line with one train. The park is not crowded, but it's not this dead. Very weird, very odd. I feel like all the signs are still saying opening Memorial Day weekend and people are staying away from it. All right, Superman with Superman. Fun ride. What do you think of it compared to uh, Tatsu? Snack size, punch a loop. Snack size. Not even, it's more like bite size. So, yeah. Nice to see it's open. Completely unexpected, obviously, from what they previously put on the maps and everything. Uh, also, to note, there are three dumpsters over there. Uh, they definitely contain a haunted house worth of stuff. Not sure which one it is. Uh, Logic would think it'd be Conjuring since it's right there, but it could have been the mansion or Fears. I, I really hope it's Fears or the mansion because those are so old and tired at this point. Uh, but regardless, it looks like one of the houses has been torn apart. Not confirmed, it just looks like it. There you go. And of course you have those new photos as well. Although it would be helpful, the photo stand was actually open. It is not. Good point. Merchandise probably was not informed that they need to open the Daily Planet. Good, good point. It seems until the log flume and the mine train and Skyride all open up, you're going to have to access Safari Off Road Adventure from inside the park going by Medusa and El Toro, the long way around. Kind of annoying, I don't understand that. Not much is done to pretty up the area. So you can see you have those faded photos that used to take your photo in front of. Temporary exchange structures still, 10 years later. Still not a great look. Hopefully if this comes a permanent thing again, they'll finally send some money and make it look a little bit better. Also just be aware, since there isn't Camp Aventura, there is no potty break. So 30 to 45 minutes, so use it before you, uh... When you've been here, my name is Megan and I'm driver, can you see that? I don't think potty break. See, the daddies have the horns, and the mommies don't have horns. So we've got animals from six of seven continents. We're only missing Antarctica. So we don't have penguins here. Who is actually using it to throw some dirt on herself. There's over 100,000 muscles in their trunks. 
They can actually pick up something as small as a dime. Zebra. This is the brand zebra. They're called a dazzle. Look at those titties. Aren't they beautiful? As lions say, they're made for our kids. We just got done with uh, Safari Off-Road Adventure for the first time. I mean, we did it two years ago, but that was a little different. And uh, it was like a warden that was doing the tour. So yeah. It was, it was, that was really good, though. It was, that yeah. was different. But she was so knowledgeable. And then a few years back, there was an old man who would do it yeah. that I would always love to get. Oh, awesome. Was, uh, you know who I'm talking about, if you oh, know. but okay. <laughs> Looking at the log film, the renovation on this is way more extensive than I realized. Uh, pretty much the trough is gone pretty much from the lifts all the way down to right here they redid these sections a few years ago I remember that wow this is really extensive how much is gone I think there's more gone than there was a week ago I know no way I think no, they were saying like summer. summer. They were saying summer. It says like, why is this not on Royal? Yeah, there is no way this much missing. Oh my god, they were doing the whole thing. Yeah, dang. I'm really happy though with this. This is really great to see though. Maybe they had to and they kept putting in a problem, so like, let's just redo it. Yeah. All. And best of the West, like, stuff is on in there. We thought we smelled something. But uh, we can see a bunch of TVs. Maybe it's a lounge right now. Well, no, maybe they're cooking stuff for other places. Oh, uh, okay. But wow, I. Dang, dang, it's like really apart. So it definitely needed a lot of work. Can I say a bad joke that's too soon? No, a boat didn't hit it. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, it's a closer look up. Look, they have one section right there. Oddly enough. Of course, with the sky right closed, we might have to get a good look at it. If it had been open, we would have been able to see oh, yeah. everything. But yeah, it looks like it's completely there. I think spillway number one, where all the water collects is there, and spillway number two, where all the collect water collects right before the drop is there. And then the spine is completely gone after sp uh, spillway number two, which is crazy. No one who's making it. I think, I think a lot of the fire will last work. They have enough people that are actually, they, I think they've been doing it mostly themselves, but a project this big, I feel like they've had to bring somebody in. This is this is a lot of work. And they're saying summer. Yeah, it's gonna be a while. This is crazy. Pretty sure we're not gonna go much further, but since this is not blocked off, we figured we'd just take a peek inside of what Best of the West is turning out to be. Looks like he has these bar top tables. That's fun. And then inside of it, Oh, looks like they're going to have a bar area now. No, it's closed. So, here's a look inside of it. Looks like it used to. I'm going to say something. I think Mine Train is ready to go. Yeah. I think it's budgetary. And with what we just saw with Superman, somehow I would not be surprised if tomorrow this opened. I, I would not be so shocked, would you? Locked off for some reason. Uh, because there's something else open past this area. Yeah, but you have Medusa open and you have this park. Yeah, I don't know why. Why? There's nothing... Well, it normally isn't open this time of year. There's nothing except for those people yeah. who are not supposed to be there. So, it's Ooh. weird. Alright, well, off-road adventure is back. Same opinion I had before. I like driving through it because I kind of like being able to focus on the areas that I like more. But it was really nice to have the narration and a really good uh, driver. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, just be aware, though, early season, they don't run very many vehicles. So you're going to be waiting a very long time, whether it's from inside or outside the park. And it does seem like, for the time being, you're not going to get the monkeys or the North American Plains, which usually has the bisons. We were able to see them in the beginning of our uh, venture here, but uh, just briefly, you didn't go by them, you kind of went past them. And then, uh, so yeah, you'll get that bonus if you take it from outside the park. But uh, I guess it's glad it's back, you know, they built this. It is kind of a nice station and everything. I wish they would uh, 
spruce up the queue line and the area and everything, but uh, I think they're working on it. I'm, I'm hoping, hoping for good things later on. You could add some TVs to the queue line and talk about the new resort that's coming. They do have the TVs, but they weren't doing anything with them. No, but yeah. Just like info and. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, they do have yeah. So and Savannah, Savannah. Uh, Sunset Savannah looks great. If they lower the price, we will definitely make a video of it. But right now, I, it's cost prohibitive. They're going to have to. They're not going to sell for what they're charging. There's no way in hell people are going to pay $1,500 for that. Comment below if you're going. Yeah, I'd love to hear if you're thinking about going. And since we were already talking about the Savannah Sunset Resort and Spa, let's take a look at what has been done so far while we were on the tour. We will get great views of it. This is mostly the staging area right here, so not much to show you. But uh, mostly they've been working on getting all those platforms up that are going to have the tent on top of them. There will be 20 of them. Uh, you can see two or three. Three, three of them have been put in place already. These are the most basic ones. I believe that's the up to four people, the cheapest ones. Uh, not the cheapest ones, because these ones have a view of the safari. But you can see mostly they're just basically decks with the tents placed on top of them. Uh, really cool to see all this construction, and there are definitely a lot of them. I love these ones over here on the other side. While you're not going to be able to really get the giraffes as much since they're all on the other side, I really love how they're basically on the side of the hill. That's really cool. So uh, definitely moving along with it. It is reusing a lot of the infrastructure from Camp Aventura. The transportation, because you'll be able to go to the park and you have your own VIP tour and everything like that. And uh, yeah, that's a quick look at it. We'll talk about it more in a few weeks. Wouldn't be a park update in early season without a video on Dream Street. Uh, they have started to paint this design in the middle, as I suspected. It's going to be patterned after the tents. And some of the bricks are in. And they have more entertainment on the walkways, including the stilt guy. And the first section of bricks have gone in. As you can see, uh, this is all they sold so far, I think. But this might be section number one and um, I don't even think I'm in this one yet uh, looks fine Jeff's brick all right here is Jeff you know Jeff he's been in a lot of videos especially the one yesterday there it is he did the in loving memory of Batman and the Chiller nice not much of a update for the flash vertical velocity seems like they're encasing that power box that was there you can see there it has now a little building that's not really related to the construction of the actual coaster, just utility work surrounding it. Planning on doing a full construction update later this week. So that should come out either on uh, Thursday or Friday, something like that. The giant wheel is looking absolutely gorgeous. It has been fully repainted. Oh my God, that slight off-white color. Ariel, look at it. It's not an eyesore anymore. Yeah. Like it was moldy, rusty, disgusting looking. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Can you imagine when we're done, just being able to see the Ferris wheel just over the carousel building with the new LED package when we're sitting at our seats by the bar? at the end of Dream Street. <sighs> Thing of beauty. Look at that. Look how fresh it is. Oh, the ladder climb thing that turned into a lounge. It's now the basketball game because there used to be a basketball game right there. Now it's over here. I like it. It looks a lot more, less obnoxious. As far as motor situation goes, still missing that fourth motor. Hopefully that comes back so it can run all the cars but look how fresh this looks. They did this really quickly too. It doesn't look like they're completely done. I think they're still on a second coat in some areas, but uh, to make a comparison, this pole right here that's all rusty, that's what the whole thing looked like last week. Wow. All right, the Jersey Devil is on two trains. So that's great to see. And we heard reports that this was open yesterday, but uh, it is not open right now. They did add glass to the booth. The ongoing saga of Barnstormer. Will we ever ride it? 
Congo Rapids sign is now down. Of course, we're going to see that Roaring Rapids sign soon. And uh, two things to unpack here at Nitro. First of all, I guess that Snickers banner was up so long that it, it left weathering. Do you see it? Yeah. Now you can't unsee it. Also, while not repainted, they power washed the most visible track on the ride. So while it looks faded, at least it looks clean, this turnaround. Doesn't that look nice? Yeah. Like seriously, you can actually see that it was pink at one point. One point. Or are you gonna use our skip? Because that's long enough with one train. Yikes! I'll do a proper update as I said on Thursday, but we get to see even more supports that arrive, which I guess I haven't shown you. There when I was in the park last Sunday, but uh, you can see that right there. Uh, Skull Mountains, it's been closed for the season so far. Not sure what's going on. It's usually old reliable. It, it, it goes for every season all the time. Barely has any breakdowns for a ride built by Intim, which is notorious for having a lot of downtime. I'm assuming it's maintenance, but I'd also loved if it was actually, they're putting some money into it, fixing the inside up so it's not as, you know, bright inside with all the light pollution that comes through the cracks and all that stuff. That would be absolutely fantastic. Add back those effects in that they had for the Summer Vibes Festival a few years ago. That'd be super sweet, awesome. But uh, I think it's probably just maintenance related, unfortunately. And of course, still don't know about the Skyride. The vehicles are still sitting at the back of the picnic pavilion looking very, very sad and lonely. And Chop Six is not open for the season yet either. Also, over this way, uh, the Scrambler Deja Vu is uh, in pieces. Uh, I don't assume that will be very long. This get put, can be put together very quickly. Uh, no progress has been made since opening day yet, though. All right, that's about it. You're going to the locker because we're riding Joker for the first time this season. And Ariel's going to see how disappointing Joker is compared to life after X2. Oh boy. Well, we're going to go ride Kenya Ka too, so we'll see how, what she thinks of it this year. And maybe some Toro, because why not? But bye bye, phones. Bye. All right, that is the end of this update. Uh, one thing to note, well, two things to note. Uh, I don't think I mentioned, but Kindica did open last weekend. Uh, we unfortunately didn't get a ride. Aiden, clock out. Clock out? Aiden, you need to clock out. Aiden needs to clock out. Um, bad operational change on Joker there, unfortunately. Uh, the dual station has been reduced to a single station. Uh, so they got rid of the second queue gates. Now there is a uh, fence in front of the, what was the back station. So that effectively has half the capacity. I'm a guess, and it's something that to do with... Did you just clock out, dude? Uh, I'm guessing it has to be something with uh, guests getting into areas that they weren't supposed to, and they had to do something. Hopefully, hopefully, it is just a temporary solution, and they'll be able to come up with something more permanent and have the station back. And also, right now, they're running four trains. How long did we sit on the break run for? Like five minutes. Like five minutes. They, yeah. they, they don't need to run more than three, if that. I never thought this ride needed to run five anyways, yeah. and now it really doesn't need to. And then we rode... You rode El Toro five times in a row. I'm proud of you. You love roller coasters, but you can't you can't marathon very yeah. often. I have good news and bad news. Yeah, we'll be back for an update probably probably in a month or so. We've already noticed some other things that I didn't show you in the video, but uh, yeah, we'll show you more than that. Really surprised to see Superman open. Great to see that Ka is open after just one weekend uh, being closed. Uh, ride offs are not. Great still, you know, I don't know why they're running one train on Nitro and the other two are clearly available. I feel like they're trying to budget cut the heck out of things. You said why ops? Uh, when I say ops, I mean like ops in general. Uh, no, nothing against the ride offs. Ride offs here are all great. Nitro dispatches were like 20, 30 seconds. Nitro, if they were running two trains, they would have cleared the station and it would have been walk on re-ride. So, there you go. Weird line with the seat. I don't get it. Hopefully, I don't get this. So weird. All right, bye. See you later. Also, this might not seem like a big deal, final thoughts, but there are trash cans now in the middle of the parking lot. There have never been trash cans in the middle of the parking lot. They've always been at the edge of the parking lot. Hopefully, this makes it so the parking lot's a little bit cleaner at night.